All right, we've got all of our Black Eyed Susan pieces made and we are ready to start assembling our flowers. I've got here a 16 gauge steel florist stem wire and we're gonna start out by um, wrapping this wire with floral tape and we do this just to um, add a little extra grip to the stem wire. Um, the wire on wire is really slippery so if you add a layer of floral tape between it helps add a little bit more grip. And we're going to stretch just the end of our floral tape and we're going to put it over the tip of our wire at an angle. Um, attach it to itself on the other side and fold the tip down. And we're going to spin our wire and stretch our tape. And we're angling down a little bit so we only get a little bit of overlap. And we're just going to wrap all the way down to the bottom of our wire. And then you can just rip it off. All right, so our stem wire is ready. You also need to do that for, um, there should be two other stems if you're doing the full flower stem, one for the bud and one for the second flower. And let's see, we also need to put floral tape on the leaf stems and then also the stamens. So I'm going to cut a little bit, um, a few feet off of my, um, my little spool of tape and I'm going to cut it in half. Using thinner tape like this to wrap your component stem wires just helps keep the bulk down on your stems while still giving you that extra grip from the floral tape. We're going to do the same thing to these stem wires that we did to the 16 gauge stem wire. We're going to stretch the end of the tape, fold it around and attach it to itself on the other side. And then you're going to start spinning and stretching that tape as you go down. All the way to the end. We're going to do that to the stamen as well. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap my bud pieces too. Now if you're making the full stem, you should have um, a couple more leaves and an extra stamen. Um, I've already assembled one of my flowers, so I've already done that one. All right, now we are ready to start putting pieces on our actual stem wire. Our first off is gonna be the stamen. We're going to lay it right against our prepared stem wire. So the tip is right underneath the bottom of that stamen. If you have a little bit of room, you can put the stem wire up into the stamen a little bit, but you don't need to go up very far. And we're just going to use floral tape to attach this. So again, we're going to stretch the end of that tape, attach to itself on the other side, and we're going to spin around. And always down at an angle so you don't get too much overlap. More overlap will cause more bulk. And as you're spinning, you want to make sure that this stem wire stays straight and it doesn't start to uh, wrap around the stem wire. All right, so there's our stamen on. And before the next step, I'm gonna cut a couple feet of 30 gauge wire. It doesn't really matter what color. Um, I already have green out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. And we are going to attach our petal units next. Now this is a continuous um, unit made on, all on one length of wire. And there should be a hole right in the middle of your petals. So we're going to insert our wire right into the middle and slide it all the way up. And you do want to make sure that you are tight against that stamen. 
without any gaps between. And we're not gonna wire anything on yet. We're gonna go ahead and add the second flower unit by doing the same thing, put the stem wire in through the center and slide it up. And you're also gonna wanna make sure that those uh, the stem wires from the previous unit go on. And we're gonna slide those all the way up. Now you notice here how I've got my petals directly behind each other. That's not what you want. So we're going to rotate that bottom one or the top one, whichever one is easiest to move around until you've got your petals from the first unit and between the petals from the second unit. Okay. And again, we're gonna push them up tight against each other so that there's no space between either of those units. And we're gonna add the flower sepal on as well. And we gotta get all these little stem wires through that hole. Slide it up just below the flower. Double check your petals before you go on because we're about to wire it together. All right, now I'm going to uh, straighten out these stem wires at the bottom here first because again, I don't want them twisted um, around the stem wire. So I'm going to make sure that they're all straight so they don't cause any more lumps on my flower stem. All right, so I'm pushing these units really, really close up against the, 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 um, the stamen, so it's really, really tight. And I'm gonna take my little 30 gauge assembly wire and I'm gonna put a tail of it right against the, um, the stem of the flower. And I'm gonna pinch and hold that right up against the bottom of the flower. And we're gonna start wrapping. Wrap um, several times really tightly right against the bottom there, and then you can move down. And I am wrapping really tightly. I don't want um, any of these wraps to come loose. So I am pulling pretty tightly on the wire. And I'm just moving my hand down as I wrap around. All right, so that should be far enough. I went about, about two inches down. You could probably stick with one inch, would probably be fine too. But uh, one or two inches there would be um, a good distance. And then to tie off my wire, I'm gonna pull up some of these little individual stem wires and I'm gonna loop the wire around a couple of them just to secure the end of it and then cut it off. All right, so now we've got all of these um, exposed wires that we need to cover up. So we're gonna take our floral tape and I'm just using directly off the spool, I'm not cutting in half for this part. And we're gonna attach it um, right below that flower. And we're gonna cover up those wires. And again, as you're twisting, you wanna try and keep your fingers off of these loose wires so that they don't end up spinning around. And you do want to keep an eye on them anyways, just in case. And if you do notice that they're twisting around, straighten them out before you go any further. All right, I'm just going to wrap down a little ways. I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom of the stem. All right, so we've got a one flower here already made. And um, we're gonna need to attach the leaves at this point. All right, now it's time to add on some leaves to our flower stem. Now, if you're doing uh, the flower, you need one small leaf and one large leaf. And we're gonna need some more 30 gauge wire because I am wiring these on. You can attach them with just floral tape if you want to, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you that this was an option um, to be able to attach your leaves. So I'm going to take um, the small leaf first and I'm gonna put it about two, two or so inches below the flower head. You can vary that a little bit if you want to. 
Um, we don't need our flowers to look like they may were punched out of a cookie cutter mold. So if you want to put it a little bit lower, you're welcome to do that. And we're going to press the um, stem wire of our leaf right against the stem of our flower. And we're going to pinch and hold it in place. And again, we're going to take our 30 gauge wire and we're going to put a tail of that right against the flower stem. Pinch and hold everything together while you wrap around really tightly just below the leaf a few times. And then once you're comfortable with that hold, you can start moving down a little bit. Okay, I'm about an inch below that small leaf and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my large one. And again, just like the small leaf, you can vary the placement a little bit. And we're going to wire around that one just the same as the first one. going to tie off this wire just like we did up here with the flower. We're going to bend out one of those stems, those little stem wires on our leaf, wrap around it, pull it tight, and then trim it off. And then we're going to cover that with tape. It might be easier to use half lip tape for this um, just because of the space between the leaves. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to get into that space with thinner tape. So that's what I'm going to use for mine. I'm going to start just below that small leaf and I'm going to go down and I want to make sure that I get into this crack between the large leaf and the stem. So I'm going to gently bend it back and get into that crack and then bend it back into place and then wrap down. So there we have one completed flower stem. Alright, now we're going to put together our bud stem and it's going to be pretty similar to the large flower. I've already got my 16 gauge wire um, covered with floral tape, just like I did with the flower. And I've got, oops, <laughs> I've got my uh, stamen wire wrapped and also the, um, the, this should be a small leaf that you use for the bud. That stem wire will also need to be wrapped. And we are ready to assemble. So I've got some more half width tape here that I'm gonna use to attach my stamen. And it's gonna be just like the flower. I'm gonna put that stamen right at the end of my stem wire. And if you have some space, go ahead and um, put that stem wire inside a little bit. And then we're going to use our floral tape to stick that together. This stem wire does not want to be straight. All right. Okay. So there's my stamen attached, and um, we're gonna put our flower or our bud petals and the bud sepal on, just like with the flower. There should be a hole right in the middle of your um, bud petal unit. I'm gonna put the end of the stem wire right inside that hole and slide it up. And you can go ahead and add the sepals at the same time if you want. And we're just gonna push them all the way up to the end right below that stamen, and again, we're going to give it a little push to make sure that they're nice and snug together. Make sure that my stem wires are straight. And then I'm gonna use some of my 30 gauge wire, and I'm gonna wire that together. Again, I'm gonna wrap several times just below the flower head really tightly just to make sure we're really secure there at the top. 
and then I'm going to wrap down at least an inch. And then secure the end by um, pulling up one of these stem wires and wrap around. And we're going to cover that up with our floral tape. And you do want to make sure that your tape gets all the way up against the bottom of that flower so you don't have anything exposed below. Alright, so there is um, the petals and the sepals added on and we're going to attach um, one small leaf um, about one or two inches below the flower. And I need more of this wire. Just about a foot will do of this wire, the 30 gauge wire. And again, just like the large flower, we're going to wire really really tight against the um, bottom of the leaf. And then we're going to move down. And also just like the large flower, I mentioned um, in that section that you can use floral tape in place of this wire if you would like to. Um, just wanted to show you that you can use wire. Right, we're going to wire down it at least one inch. You can go a little further if you want. And then we're going to tie off that wire, clip it, and we're going to cover with floral tape. Alright, so there's our bud. I want to show you guys a little bit of shaping with this bud before we go on to the flossing uh, segment of the assembly video. Uh, we're going to fold all of these petals in around the stamen. Just like that. And now we don't want all of our petals to look exactly the same. So we're going to take a few of them and just bend them out gives a little bit more movement. Looks like it's starting to open up. And maybe let's see, let's twist this one a little bit. Just twist the tip of that one. And maybe one over here too. All right. So there's our little bud. Oh, I've got the sepals. We need to shape these sepals too. Now we don't want them all, again, just like the petals, we don't want them all the same. So I'm going to curl some of them up toward the flower and then some of them also down. And this one I'm going to kind of twist sideways a little bit just for fun. All right, no, let's, let's bend a few more out. Okay. And we don't want to forget our leaf. So I'm going to grab um, at the tip and at the bottom, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a twist. And let's see, let's put a little, a little wave in that edge there. Okay, now you can always reshape more of it later if you want to. This is not finished yet, um, as we do need to, of course, add the floss on and attach it to the other flowers. And you can continue shaping even after you've arranged your flowers. So don't feel like anything is permanent. You can play as much as you want um, to get the shape and the look that you want. Alrighty, so we've got um, our two flowers and our bud fully assembled. And now before we can combine them together into one stem, we're going to want to floss all of the individual stems um, it's a lot easier to do it that way than after they're all put together. So um, we're going to floss down um, 
at least a couple inches below the leaves, but the exact length is gonna vary a little bit from one person to the next. You need to keep in mind how tall your vase is and how far your uh, flowers are gonna be sticking out of the top of it. And you also want to plan out kind of how you want your stem to be arranged. I've already kind of trimmed my stems down here at the bottom so I can match up my stems. I wanted one of my flowers to be a little bit taller on this stem. And then I'm gonna have a bud in the back that's a little bit taller as well, maybe about right there. And then I'm gonna join them together a couple inches below um, the lowest leaf here. So about right here is to where I need to floss on all of my stems. And again, that might be a little bit different for everybody. All right, so once you've got your thread divided, you are ready to begin flossing your stem. Just like the assembly wire, we're gonna lay a little short tail of the thread on the stem directly below the flower head. And I'm gonna pinch and hold that, that little tail with my thumb right up against the bottom of the flower. And then you just wrap around. And even if you're using three strand floss, you still wanna make sure that you're untwisting. And you'll do that same thing with six, uh, six strand floss as well. You wanna make sure that you untwist all of those strands so that they lay flat and directly beside each other as you wrap. And you also wanna make sure that there's not any gaps along the stem between your threads. So you will just wrap down, covering over that tail of floss. And once you're far enough down, I like to flip my flower upside down and then I can just spin the flower. Which makes it go a little bit faster. I know if this leaf starts getting in the way, you can just kind of gently bend it back so that you can keep spinning without your hand knocking into it all the time. All right now you wanna make sure that you get your floss all the way down into that crack between the leaf and the stem. And then fold the leaf back up. And you can wrap around the bottom. All right, so I'm just gonna continue wrapping until, um, see how far do I need to go down my stem here? That's probably a good five inches down below my stem, five or six inches there. Um, so I'm gonna go wrap that and I'll be right back to show you how to secure the end of your floss. All right, so I've actually run out of floss before I reached how far down I wanted to go. So I'm gonna show you guys how to add in a, um, a new strand of floss if yours is too short. So you wanna start adding in your new floss when you have a couple inches left over of your old floss. All right, we're gonna take the tail of the new floss and lay it down against the stem. Then take the old floss and wrap over it once. And then grab that tail and hold it down against the stem right beside the other. And then you'll take your new floss and just continue wrapping. Make sure you're going the same direction as the previous floss. And then you just continue wrapping over both of those tails to secure both of them. All right, so I've reached the end of where I'm gonna be flossing to and I need to secure this end of my floss now you've got two options here. You can either tie a knot in the, th the thread or you can just cover over it with floral tape. Now because I am gonna be joining together and I'm gonna be adding another layer of floral tape on top of this, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be just fine just using floral tape here. go all the way to the end of the stem. Okay, so there we have our bud, which has been fully assembled and flossed. 
All right, so now I've got all of my stems individually flossed. Um, before we go on, we want to go ahead and do some shaping to the flower. Uh, I went ahead and shaped the bud after assembly, um, just because nothing's going to get in the way of the flossing when I shape this one uh, before I floss. But with these flowers, the petals end up drooping down. And um, if you shape them first, then you're going to get in the way of your flossing. So I figure it's just a little bit easier to leave them flat, um, at least until you get that floss on. But it is also easier to shape them before you assemble them all together. All right, so now let's talk about how to shape these flowers. Now, Black Eyed Susan petals usually droop down a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a bend, and I'm doing this just by putting my thumb right at the base underneath the petal. And then I'm gonna press down with my other finger. And I'm gonna do that all the way around to all of the petals. Now shaping is not something that I consider to be, um, it's not optional. You gotta do some shaping. Good technique will only get you so far. If you're not shaping your flowers, they're gonna look flat and lifeless. So do some amount of shaping. That's not optional with French beading. But what is optional is how much you choose to shape it. If you want to bend these down a little bit further, you can. Um, I kinda like this amount of droop with mine, so that's where I'm gonna stick. Um, However, you don't want to just droop them down because that's not what Black Eyed Susans do. There's a little bit more of a flare to them. So I'm going to take some of the edges of these petals. I'm going to bend just the tip of it up. So I get this nice little curve, this nice little S shape with the petal. So it's going to droop down and then curl back out. And I'm going to do that to a couple of my petals. Not too many though, you don't want to overdo it. Maybe let's do one on the bottom. The bottom layer will bend one of those out. Okay, now we curled some up and so we're gonna also curl some in. So I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna curl that one under a little bit more. And maybe I'll do that over here too. All right, now the next uh, thing I wanna show you is that you can actually twist some of these as well. So I'm gonna grab just the very tip of the petal and I'm gonna twist it a little bit. Now if any of your rows become separated while you're shaping, um, just go ahead and mold them back into place. This is wire, you can do whatever you want with it. All right, so I might go back and add a little bit more to this flower later, but I also want to make sure that I shape my sepals as well. Don't forget about these guys. They're just as important. So I'm gonna curl some up towards the flower, and then I'm gonna bend some down away from the flower. All these little bends and curls and uh, twists, they just add more movement to the flower. So it looks like um, maybe there's been some wind that day. Maybe it's opened up. Maybe it's starting to to fade a little bit. That just, it makes it more alive. All right, so the leaves, you don't want to forget your leaves either. I'm going to grab the bottom of one and the top of the other, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist. And maybe let's add a little bit of a of a wave in the bottom there. I'm going to put two fingers on top and my thumb below. I'm going to push my thumb up just a little bit to add a little bit of wave there on the edge. However, this one over here, I'm going to bend it backwards a little bit and then maybe curl out the tip. All right, so that, that's pretty good for now. Um, I'm going to add a little Let's do a little tiny little bit of bend in the stem. I don't want it too straight. Okay, just a little bit there. Okay, now what you don't want to do is just shape everything exactly the same. Um, I said before in one of my previous videos that we're not baking cookies here, we're making flowers. Um, so you don't want it to look like it's been punched out of a cookie cutter mold. So make everything a little bit different.
All right, so I've got all my flowers assembled, flossed, and shaped, and now it's time to finally combine them into a finished stem. Now before I flossed, I already trimmed all my stems to the length I wanted. I planned out how I wanted my stem arranged. So now all that I have to do is to attach them together. And I'm gonna use floral tape for this. I'm gonna put the two flowers together first, I think. All right, now starting right where I ended my floss, that's where I'm gonna to join together with the floral tape. And I am going to floss all the way down to the bottom. Or sorry, this isn't floss, this is tape. I'm gonna tape all the way down to the bottom. Just rip that off and then I'm going to add in my bud. I decided I wanted that on the back side for this stem and I'll put it about right there. I made one of my flowers uh, really tall and one short and I'm going to put the bud somewhere in the middle I think. All right so I'm going to again I'm going to use my floral tape and right in that same spot I'm going to use my tape to attach them together. Okay, so I made some adjustments to the height from when I planned it earlier, and that's okay. But you do want to make sure that you trim your stems to about the same length. So I'm going to take my stem cutters and just cut off. Oh. Oops. <laughs> okay, just cut off those stem wires, but be careful, please. <laughs> All right, so I've got my stem put together um, with floral tape down there. Now you wanna take into account the, the height of your vase. If this is going to be um, higher than the lip of your vase, you'll want to add in more floss and floss down a little bit more. I have an example here that I can show you with my other stem. Um, I added more floss down below the junction where all those stems come together and I flossed down a little bit just to where the lip of my vase would be. Well, there's one thing I wanted to show you. Um, I've made multiples of these flower stems because I am making a larger arrangement. And when you are working with a larger arrangement, I do recommend that you don't make all of your flower stems exactly the same. So this one here, um, my flowers are a little bit closer in height, and then my bud's a little bit shorter, and it's on the front side. And the whole stem is a little bit shorter than my other one. This just adds a little bit more interest to your arrangements. Um, when you go out into a field of wildflowers and you pick stems, they're not all going to be exactly the same. So that helps give you a little bit more of an organic feel to your arrangements. And then of course my last stem here um, just has one little flower on it and one bud. So I can have just a small pop of yellow in another part of my arrangement.